Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint some lovely ducks and ducklings in my loose watercolour style. So grab your paints and let's get started. So we're going to paint a, um, a little family of ducks, of mallard ducks because they've got lovely patterns and things. And this is going to be in my loose watercolour style but as has become recent tradition, I'm going to do a little pencil drawing for you first. So the way I do it is I think about the, um, the back of the duck and then I also think about the sort of shoulder of the wing as my sort of first piece to sort of put the pieces together and that will gradually sort of create this kind of shape for the duck tail and will also allow us to get that chest in. Now it's interesting, the, um, the male and female adult ducks, so the drake is the name for the male mallard and the hen is the female. The drake tends to have a longer neck and the female, the hen, tends to have a shorter neck. Um, but those are the, probably the main differences. But on the whole, get that back and that in there and then from there you can get to your basic shape and then for the head curling up over the top and then there is a bit of a sort of a bit of area where the chin sort of juts out before you get the beak and the beak will be an extension of the forehead comes down and there you go and then your legs as always they sit a bit further back than you always think they will and the lovely webbed feet. So let's have a go. I'm gonna begin with the hen mallard and I've got some lovely raw umber here. And I'm just going to, it's quite like ochre that color really and I just want to get some burnt sienna mixed up as well and some French ultramarine blue because I want to knock back the warmth in that colour there and just get ourselves a slightly muddier colour which is going to be a fantastic basis for our mallard hen. So let's go. You know what, I uh, when I was practising I was like, oh these are quite hard. <laughs> but it's got to think positive, okay? So there we start with our nice back and then I'm going to just get in the sort of shoulder which also inadvertently leads us to get the chest so we come up there we go and all this I'm doing this in this very kind of dilute color and I can just add a little bit of tuftiness there and then I'm going to start bringing in just some very subtle bits of extras of tail feather you see but I'm trying to just keep a sort of a sense of feathery definition and then we come up to the head so I'm going to just curve over curve over and down so we've got that's a really nice head shape. Get a little bit of darkness up the back there because they do have that and then just a little bit in at the beak. And then for the beak colour, I've got a bit of cadmium orange, a bit of cadmium yellow mixed together. And it's still a little bit of a muted colour. So I just popped in a tiny bit of burnt sienna and I am just going to, with sort of a minimal stroke, that's just got a lovely character to it, that beak, but I am just gonna add a tiny bit to the bottom there. And whilst that is still wet, I'm going to take, whoops, a daisy. <laughs> what am I gonna go for? I'm gonna take my uh, four tenths, just of my regular pro art brushes, and I am going to pop in just a little bit of feathery detail whilst it's still wet. So I'm just adding a bit more intensity, a bit more concentration to my uh, shadowy mix. And the hen 
has quite a lot of lovely dappled detail on her and you could just get this by looking at a little photo but I'm sort of combining the warmer burnt sienna and the cooler shadow mix and I'm just going to start sort of working my way up and in these nice little unpainted bits we'll get little bits of texture in slightly more defined manner I do quite like in this loose watercolour style where you can find the areas of unpainted space and really sort of go to town on bits of detail there. Okay. And if you let a loose piece just dry for, for a minute or two, it'll reward you with a sort of surface that allows paint to feather a little bit, excuse the pun, um, but will allow it to just sort of hold its shape in the tiniest way. So the, the little dashes get smaller towards the breast of the bird and then they get us a little bigger as we get there. And then for the back and the tail feathers, just a little bit of a larger brush to get in some of the darkness there and some of the bigger strokes and also there is going to be the tiniest flash of that famous mallard blue which is going to be just tucked in there but we're going to leave that for the moment and let it let it dry but we can put in the legs and feet so I've got some cadmium orange but actually I am going to add that's just off camera probably, tiniest bit of cadmium red because they really do have this most amazingly vibrant legs and we're going to pop in one leg and two legs so the one can be in the foreground so that can be sitting sort of down from the body and one up behind and I've just sort of splayed my brush out a fraction to get a lovely webbed foot. Okay, so we're going to leave that for the moment and we're gonna have a go at our drake mallard, so the male duck. And he has a much more, probably a, a better known coloring. Um, he has the famous sort of jewel green head and a gray coat of feathers. And again, the flash of bright blue. Um, we actually painted a mallard feather in my um, feather painting series um, so you could always go back and have a look at that if you want to see what I'm talking about. Okay so I've got a, a grey tone mixed in here and I am going to paint in just like we did with the previous a back feather and just let it sort of peter out just like that and then that sort of shoulder which leads us down into the body oh and I think I'm going to change my water because it's got quite a lot of warmth in it there and towards the sort of back here we just sort of dibble about a bit with a few brush strokes but he does have a very striking black tail feather so I am going to just pop those in and then just use the brush to close back in and he does have a little bit extra on the top there so as I said before like using a loose watercolour approach, as long as you haven't sort of waterlogged your page, you can get these lovely blends and get a nice bit of control. Okay, so moving on up the body, we now need a little bit more brown in the mix, and we're also gonna need some green. So I've got sap green down here. And I'm going to add to that the tiniest bit of Prussian blue. 
because I want it really sort of vibrant. Okay, so let's move our way up the body. It's brown, but not too brown. So as I said, the, the Mallard Drake tends to have a slightly taller neck. And then the green head has always a little collar of white. So I've just left that slight unpainted space. And we'll just curve over and come down. And then when it comes up, comes forward a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do just a little bit of Prussian blue mixed with some black because it really is a very intense dark green. And then we're going to paint in his beak and his beak is a little more yellow than his lady friends. So we're just gonna use pure cadmium yellow and we're going to end up with a little bit of a blend but I'm just gonna try and do this in one stroke. nice. Now one thing I always found quite challenging when practicing these ducks was the scale of the head to the body and if you feel like your body needs a bit more to it then this is the time that you can just add maybe an extra bit of a tail feather or an extra bit to the body there but that's quite a useful thing there because I just felt like that head was quite big but yeah really pleased with that so and he's also going to have a little shock of blue in there later on but let's get his legs painted in so they're the same lovely orange and they're going to just sit we'll have one come in there and one there as he strides forward and then just fan out the brush just a little Lovely. Now, what are ducks without their ducklings? And we're going to have a little series of ducklings to accompany these two. And I've got some yellow ochre here, and we also need some cadmium yellow. So ducklings, mallard ducklings, have got a, a very sort of fluffy, downy, pale yellow coat, and then they have markings, quite distinct markings even from a very early age of a sort of cool brown colour. So I'm just going to mix some of this in here. So we've got a sort of blue-brown shadowy mix knocking back the raw umber here. And these are the two colours we're going to need. So. I'm going to take my size two brush which has just been doing such a great job so far and I'm going to paint in a few duckling shapes. Now ducklings have funny little bodies, we've got big bulbous sort of almost alien style heads and then a very sort of pronounced shape, a bit like a pronounced chest and then tail feathers so we'll pop one in so we're going to have a little yellow head and then a real sort of pronounced chest and then a little tail and they look quite strange at this point but trust me they will they will turn into cute little ducklings um, and we'll have one sort of we'll have one or two just sort of sat down because they can't really be bothered to walk So a little body and a head 
So we've got quite slender necks for very large bodies and then we'll have one just sort of sat on his own. Wondering what on earth is everybody else doing walking about. Okay, so we've given ourselves a tiny bit of time to let the first one dry. So what I can do is just add in a little bit of this brown colour. And there is some quite sort of distinct markings, but on the whole, it sort of covers over the back and the back of the head. So as long as you've got a bit of that in there, then you're good. Right, so whilst those dry, we can just finish off the details on our mum and dad. So I've been talking about that lovely blue mallard feather. So French Ultramarine gives us that lovely electric blue colour. And we're only going to see a little bit of it, but it's very distinct. So we've popped it in on mum and now on dad. And that looks really nice. And if you want to just sort of, not blend it in, but sort of tie it in a little bit, you could just get a little bit of your shadow mix. And just cover it over a little bit. But we do need some eyes. So I've got Mars Black here with my nice small brush. Now, one thing that you probably don't immediately notice on a duck is that they have this almost like this, this imprint where the eye sits. So what we first want to do with just a rather dilute amount of this color is we want to put a bit of definition on them. And this definition here will be reflected actually in the, in the ducklings, about to say chicks then, um, and here, A little over the head again. Now with some more concentrated black first we can do a little nostril on the beaks and actually the hen has often got this kind of darker coloured top of her bill anyway. Okay, let's go for some eyes now. So they don't need to be a huge amount of detail, but I like to just sort of make them a little, if I just show you on a bit of paper here. So you've got quite a hump on the top, but not too much underneath. But those look lovely and we can now just finish off our little baby ducklings because they've had a little bit more time to dry. So we're going to add a little bit more detail to them. So they have these stripes down the side of their faces too. And this one's a bit more of a three quarter angle so we can see him slightly from the side. Sort of look like little superheroes with these funny masks. And then because they've dried a little bit more, we can add just a fraction more detail to these bodies. Now I'm just getting a slightly darker colour 
to get their little legs, webbed feet and their beaks and their eyes. So, first off, We're probably not going to see proper little um, feet from them, but we will see a little beak. And then that beak gives us the eye line. And then we'll just let those dry 100% and then we can add the last little details. Okay, these guys have dried now, so we can just add in a little bit of pink under the beak. And then a little eye with some Mars black. And there we have a loose watercolour family of mallard ducks. Thanks so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.